Welcome to part three of webinar, Ensure the Path to a Successful Atlassian Cloud Migration. Today, we will be talking about what happens during the production migration, what to prepare, and how to review the migration data. We will also share some dark features that will otherwise not be available with default migration tools. You may have learned that Jula dashboard is not being covered by migration tools by default. Matthew, Matthew in a moment, he will share a dark feature in, for how to enable this migration feature for dashboard. But you may still wonder, what if you use some apps for dashboard? How does the migration looks like for those apps? Here, I'm happy to introduce Morgan from O Street Solution. So she will share how to manage their marketplace apps during cloud migration. And here, I just want to have a brief introduction about O Street Solution. They are Atlassian marketplace render, making apps for dashboard reports for both Jura and the conference along with many other useful apps. I believe Morgan will tell us more about her company in a moment. And here, if you, this webinar, it's a four part migration webinar. It's a four part series migration webinar. So if you mix the part one webinar about how to prepare for cloud migration, you can check out our YouTube video. And here it's a part two, test the migration YouTube video. And I will do a brief introduction about uh, Dragon Agile. Um, so it, uh, Dragon Agile is an Atlassian solution partner. Globally, we are partner solution partner. We provide licensing, training, implementation, consulting, and uh, we can also provide apps design. We have global office in China, in Canada, in Japan, and Dragon Agile is in Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. And we are also at Atlassian Marketplace Render. We have 15 apps available on the marketplace. Feel free to take a look. Here is a sample list of our customers. So they are from North America, from Asia, and uh, some are also from Europe. And here I will turn over to Matthew and he will uh, tell us in details about uh, production migration. Matthew, you can take over now. Let me unshare. Yep, so hi everyone, I'm Matthew. Nice to meet you all. Today, I'm going to take you through the production migration steps for an Atlassian cloud migration. So here's today's agenda. First, we'll go over the important steps you should take right before the migration. And these apply to all Jira, Confluence, and Bitbucket. Uh, then we'll go over how the migration assistant actually works. Uh, next, we'll cover some dark features for both the Jira and Confluence migration assistant. And these are features that are not enabled by default, but could enhance your migration. And after Morgan from Old Street Solutions will come on and speak to us about migrating their dashboard apps to cloud. Then we'll talk about the other upcoming webinars related to this one. Uh, following this, we'll spin a wheel to see who wins today's prize. And at the very end, there will be a chance for a Q&A from the audience. So first, let's start with important steps you should take right before the migration. And this webinar assumes that you have already gone through the preparation and test migrations and resolved all the issues. Uh, the production migration should be smooth since the test migration should have covered mostly everything. So you should notify your users in advance of the production migration day and be sure that they don't make changes during the production migration timeframe. If you wanna be completely safe, you can put your sites in read-only mode. So for Confluence, you would go through each space and remove all permissions for anything other than read. And for Jira, you'd make a new permission scheme that only has the browse permission and apply it to all projects. And nothing needs to be done for Bitbucket since, the, since no group and project permissions are migrated. 
So before performing the production migration, be sure to have a backup of your server site in case the migration goes wrong. If you're merging with an existing cloud site, uh, make sure you have a backup of the cloud site as well. So if you're migrating to a new cloud instance, be sure that there is no data in your cloud site before your production migration. The migration assistance will not let you migrate a project or space if there is an existing one in the cloud site with the same name or key. As well, install the necessary software and apps onto your cloud instance. And if you are merging with an existing cloud site, you need to delete your projects and spaces that were migrated from a test migration. So now I'll cover how the migration assistant works. Uh, this was covered in our previous webinar, but for those who weren't there, I'll explain how it works again. So there are three main steps, which are assess your apps, prepare your apps, and migrate your data. And each of these steps will be covered in more detail on the next slides. So these are the four statuses, and each app must be assigned a status. The migration of apps and app data is handled by the vendor, when not by Atlassian. So the first status, no decision made, is the default, and this will not migrate the app data. Uh, the second status, needed in cloud, uh, means that you need to migrate this app and its data to a cloud instance. Uh, depending on the migration path, the assistant will try to migrate the app along with its data and generate a log as to what has or hasn't been migrated. Uh, not needed in cloud means the app does not need to be migrated to your cloud instance. And the use alternative status will allow you to select an alternative app to replace the current one. So the second step is to prepare your apps. So the migration assistant will ask you to install the apps on the cloud site, and you can do it directly through the assistant. Uh, for each app, you will need to agree to app migration. And since the app App data migration is performed through the vendor or the marketplace partner, you must review and agree to each marketplace partner agreement. And remember that once you agree to a third party migration, you can revoke your agreement at any time. So the last step is to migrate your data. So the migration assistant will review your migration to check for common errors. Uh, after configuring your migration, make sure to either save it or run it and don't close out of the browser until either of those actions have been done. So it will generate a pre-migration report, which includes summary, requires attention, users and groups, and configuration items. And this report will tell you about any potential problems, an example being a custom field that isn't supported by the migration assistant. Uh, once you run the migration, you can monitor the progress of it by viewing the details, and there it will show which project or space it is currently migrating and what percentage of entities it has migrated. After running the migration, the assistant will also generate a post-migration report, which includes summary and requires attention. This report has the summary data of what successfully migrated and what didn't migrate, as well as items that were not supported during migration. So now we'll talk about some dark features for the Jira Cloud Migration Assistant. Uh, since we didn't cover these in the test migration, we'll talk about it in this production migration webinar. So the Jira Cloud Migration Assistant has a few dark features that can be manually enabled, and these include bypassing certain migration checks, possibly migrating more data, and other features. Uh, however, these features are still under development, and they should be experimented on during the test migration. So to access the dark feature tab, go to your Jira URL slash secure, and the rest of the link is there. So the first dark feature can be used if you have too many invalid or duplicate emails. And this allows you to download the invalid and duplicate users as a CSV file, and then re-upload it with changes. And the second dark feature allows you to migrate attachments only. Uh, attachments are usually the longest part of a migration, so this will break the migration into chunks. And this is typically used if you have a large amount of data or you're on a time constraint. So the third dark feature allows you to migrate everything except issues and issue data. And this is usually used to start clean in cloud, 
or narrow down certain migration problems. And the last dark feature here allows you to skip migrating users and groups, but requires a first time migration of all users. Uh, however, the, the migration assistant already allows you to migrate only users and groups related to the selected projects. So this dark feature should rarely be used. So here are some more dark features for Jira. So using all three of the keys, cross project boards are able to be migrated, but they will not be assigned to a project once in the cloud. And all three must be activated in order for it to work. Uh, for the second one, incompatible workflow rules will not be migrated and they'll either need to be fixed manually or you can use this dark feature to skip, to skip the workflow rules and they will not be migrated. Uh, the app outdated pre-flight check should only be bypassed during the testing phase, and this bypasses the check that forces you to upgrade the plugin. And for the last one, the skipping of the pre- and post-migration reports should only be done after at least one run, and this should only be used if there is a strict time constraint, as generating the reports could lead to delays. So here are the last four dark features for JIRA. So for the first one, there's an app called Jira Toolkit. And using that dark feature, you're able to migrate custom fields that were made by this app. Uh, for the second one, you're able to migrate notification schemes, but this feature is still under development. And for the third one, um, it disables the Jira service management migration. And this is usually used for test migrations. If you suspect that Jira service management migration is causing something else to break. And for the last one, uh, normally you are not able to migrate system dashboards or any third party gadgets. As well, the remigration of dashboards could cause some issues. And each dashboard needs to have a unique name. And this is recommended to be the final step of the migration uh, using a dummy project. And this could also require some post-migration work since this feature is still under development. So now we'll talk about some dark features for the Confluence Cloud Migration Assistant. So to access the Confluence Dark Feature tab, uh, you go to your Confluence URL slash admin slash dark features dot action. So for the first one, it's the app outdated pre-flight check. It's the same as Jira. So this should only be bypassed during the testing phase. And this bypasses the check that forces you to upgrade the plugin. So the second feature allows you to skip the pre-flight check where it will check for missing attachments. And this could make the check faster, especially if you have millions of attachments. And for the third one, uh, during the migration, if the assistant found some attachments missing, it will fail the migration. And with this third feature, it will continue on with the migration, even with the missing attachments. So here are some more dark features for Confluence. So the first one allows for a faster space export, which is an experimental feature that needs to be fully tested. And there might still be gaps that might, there are still gaps that might need to be filled or fixed. Uh, for the second one with this dark feature, inline tasks are exported in a CSV file and processed separately in Confluence Cloud. Uh, when there are many inline tasks during um, migration, there is a chance that it will fail in the space import process. So the last uh, dark feature allows you to modify a configured migration in five different ways, which are edit, copy, delete, archive, and restore. Edit allows you to change what is migrated with that configuration. So you can add more projects or spaces or remove them. Uh, copy allows you to copy an existing migration plan. Delete allows you to delete a saved or ready plan. Archive allows you to archive a finished migration plan. And restore allows you to restore an archived migration plan. So now we'll have a special guest speaker from Old Street Solutions who will talk about migrating their dashboard apps to cloud. And I'll hand it over to Morgan now. Great, thank you. That was really interesting. Okay, let me share my screen. Um, so I'm gonna talk about apps specifically or apps migrating apps generally and then about uh, dashboards specifically. Um, so but a quick background for me um, before that. 
Um, my name's Morgan. Oh, there we go. I'm a product manager at Old Street Solutions, um, specifically for the custom charts apps. So custom charts is two different apps, one for Jira and one for Confluence. Um, we provide easy reporting and dashboarding. Um, so obviously cloud migration is important to us. Our products are available on data center, server, and cloud with pretty much identical functionality. But um, migrating is still um, can still be a challenge for really for any apps. So um, jumping into that really quickly. Um, at a high level, right, when we're talking migrations, I mean, I think Matthew's already covered a lot of this, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Um, but like, why does it matter migrating your apps? Um, this quote or this statistic is from Atlassian that says more than 60% of Atlassian customers use apps from the marketplace and even more on server. Uh, personally, I feel like this statistic is low. <laughs> I would have guessed like uh, between 80 to 90 percent at least. Um, I don't know if I've ever run into somebody not using any apps. Um, but with that, obviously, making sure that those function um, when you move to cloud is going to be important. Um, these are basically what Matthew already covered, so I won't. This is just migrating your apps. You know, obviously, make sure, figure out what you need to use, um, how to migrate it, and then test. Again, if you watched the last webinar, you've probably heard lots of this. Um, so I'll jump forward uh, a little bit. Um, here's just sort of a visualization of that that Atlassian's put together of how do we go from server to cloud when you're looking at apps specifically. Um, so I have a link to this. It's available if you uh, if you need it. But when we're talking about dashboards specifically. So um, Jira dashboards are um, like a pretty core part of how people use, use Jira. Um, often teams will, you know, run entirely off of dashboards. And so figuring out how to get those onto cloud is going to be a, a big point of focus. Um, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> um, in current state or state of as of a few weeks ago, um, migrating dashboards to cloud is is not very easy. Um, native gadgets can be um, can be migrated fairly, you know, acceptably. Um, but the hard part is when you have marketplace apps. So each app is going to store their dashboard gadgets in a different format, um, or have you know specific things that need to happen, specific mappings. Um, that are part of the migration process. Um, and until very recently, like really two or three weeks ago, um, marketplace vendors couldn't really do, do much about that um, because Atlassian just didn't have the sort of structures in place um, to allow people or to allow vendors to, um, to migrate their apps. Um, but that's something that was recently introduced in an API for dashboard creation, which on cloud, which is really exciting just as a general feature, but also means that just about all of your, for the most part, if you're using a um, marketplace app for dashboard gadgets, I'm guessing soon um, teams will be starting to release actual migration paths, which is really exciting. Um, this was really exciting for us. Um, but in the meantime, so if you have any apps that, um, for example, dashboard apps that exist on both server and cloud, um, but there isn't a, like a dedicated migration path, um, often what that's going to look like is some manual effort. Um, and some of this can be automated if you have a really strong team like the Dragon Agile team um, to help you along the way uh, if you've got a strong partner. Um, but a lot of times sort of the intermediary steps are to look um, at what tools are available within the gadgets that aren't migration specific. Um, so that tends to be some sort of exporting functionality. Um, again, some, some of this can be automated during the process, but um, this is something that you'll, you'll wanna look for as you're evaluating how that migration of apps is gonna go, if it has to be manual or if it has to be um, something done outside of the migration assistant. So you'll want to look for um, two things. So the first is your ability to export and import um, individual gadgets. So that's like your, your actual dashboard reports. Um, 
if you have to manually move them over, what that looks like is, you know, taking an export and hitting import or something along those lines. That's something that we have built into our app, not even for migration purposes, but just because, um, you know, it can be nice to export and import a gadget or a report. Um, but it's also important not to forget about um, the app configuration. So usually, usually these apps have obviously your individual gadgets and you have, you know, the settings for how you want for example, your, you know, your bar charts to look, um, but there's generally, you know, higher level permissions or additional features that can be enabled or disabled. Um, and you'll want to make sure that those um, can be exported and imported as well. Um, that's something, that second point there, the app configuration um, is something that I, is probably potentially possible today, depending on the app that you're using. Um, for, for dashboard gadgets, right? Um, that's something that we can do. You can export or you can, using the migration assistant, get your app configuration over um, today, but not yet the individual gadgets, which is obviously, you know, the larger amount of work. But um, those are going to be sort of your in intermediary steps. Um, but once you, um, or once, once we, once the, the ecosystem catches up to Atlassian's recent announcement, hopefully this dashboard migration is going to be so, so much easier and it'll be able to be um, pretty easily looped into the migration assistant. Um, so with that, that's a, sort of a high level of what I wanted to cover. Again, um, our app is Custom Charts for JIRA. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions about that. Um, but I think I will pass it back to Matthew. Yep. So thank you so much, Morgan, for that presentation. There's a lot of useful information there regarding dashboards and gadgets. Yep. So now let's talk about our other upcoming webinars related to this session. So in the last session next week, we will cover post-migration tasks, including cleaning up users, groups, projects, and other entities. There will also be a testimonial from a real customer about their successful cloud migration. So before we go to the Q&A session, it's time to see who the winner of today's webinar is. And I'll hand it back to Irene so she can spin the wheel. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Morgan, for the great uh, uh, presentation. You're like a circle that floats. Traceable. If we discover something missing, can we find out how it went missing? Yes. So this is most likely possible from the post-migration reports. So um, usually you can also find out from the pre-migration reports. Um, those will show uh, like it has a, a column for like, uh, for example, like issues. It will show how many issues are in that project and how many are expected to migrate. And uh, yeah, so that will usually show you whether something is not going to be migrated. It will also show you why it's not migrated. And then in the post-migration report, it will also have um, a list of everything that was migrated. And then if it wasn't migrated, it will have, it will say um, why it wasn't migrated as well. Bye now. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.